Previously, we talked about deformation measures for a plasticity in a 1D bar. Now we want to talk about how are we going to treat elastic and plastic deformation uh, individually so we can evolve them appropriately, but then still combine them uh, to get the total uh, deformation in the bar because we're, we're obviously going to have uh, multiple effects, both elastic and plastic effects. We want to talk about how we can accomplish that. So to, to, to sort of frame the discussion, let's go ahead and consider um, three states of deformation in a bar. So we'll begin with state one, which is just, uh, you could think of this as our, our reference configuration, at least for the moment. And we have a point A and a point B, so we'll define those as capital A, capital B, and the distance between them is just going to be what we call delta X1. And we could describe um, the second state as, as that bar being elongated, very similarly to how we defined the current and reference configuration in, in previous lectures. And there's our point A and, and B, and we'll write those as now little a and little b because they could have moved. And we'll say that the distance in between the, them is delta x2. Okay? So that deformation, if we wanted to write it in terms of the stretch ratio, we'll call it lambda from state 1 to 2. Uh, and, I, and I'm not now defining reference versus current. I'm just saying moving, if we're treating 1 as the... <clears throat> as the reference and two as the current, we would write that as the partial of delta x2 with respect to delta x1. Okay? So now let's, let's talk about the third state. Let's let it stretch even further. So there's our super stretched bar. And we still have point A and we have point B, let's go ahead and give them some new names, alpha and beta. And that distance now is delta x3. Okay, and we could, we could describe the relationship, the deformation between two and three by treating two as the reference state and saying it moves to three. So we could say that the, we have the stretch ratio between two and three is going to be equal to the partial now of delta x3 with respect to delta x2. Okay, so those those are those are three deformation states. We talked about moving from deformation state one to two, and then deformation state two to three. Uh, we we could talk about the the deformation going from one to three. Okay, so so we can we could write the stretch ratio uh, between state 1 and 3 as follows. We would just say lambda 1 to 3 then must be the partial delta x3 over delta x1, right? <clears throat> but we could also uh, just, uh, we can use the chain rule and write that as partial of uh, delta x2 with respect to delta x1 times the partial of delta x3 with respect to delta x2, right? Uh, delta, delta x2's cancel, we have th then recover the partial delta x3 with respect to x1. And then if you look at this, you, you note that this quantity here, the first quantity is lambda 1 to 2, and the second is lambda 2 to 3. Okay, so the stretch ratio going from state 1 to state 3 is the product of state 1 to 2 times state the, the stretch ratio from state 2 to 3. How about in terms of strain? Well, in terms of strain, we can write. We'll still retain lambda 1, 1 to 3 here just for the moment. And just note that we had, uh, in the previous lecture, developed a relationship between the stretch ratio lambda and the strain, namely that the, the stretch ratio was 1 plus the strain. So this quantity becomes then 1 plus the strain from 1 to 2. And the second term becomes uh, 1 plus the strain from 2 to 3. And if we carry out that multiplication, this looks like 1 
plus the strain from 1 to 2, plus the strain from 2 to 3, plus the product of the strain from 1 to 2 and 2 to 3. Okay, so we're almost now to be able to write the combination of strains. Let's go ahead and substitute in that, that um, the stretch ratio from 1 to 3 uh, is, can also be related to strain. So using that lambda 1 to 3 is equal to also 1 plus epsilon 1 to 3, we can say that 1 plus epsilon 1 to 3 is equal to 1 plus epsilon 1 to 2 plus epsilon 2 to 3 plus the product, epsilon 1 to 2, epsilon 2 to 3. Our ones cancel, and we're left with the relationship that says epsilon 1 to 3 is equal to epsilon 1 to 2 plus epsilon 2 to 3 plus epsilon 1 to 2 times epsilon 2 to 3. Okay? So what this says is that, it, at least in its pure sense, we can't simply add strains. But, but if the strains are small, such that this product term goes to, to zero or can be, uh, is negligible, then we, we could add them. So let's, let's write that. Uh, in the event that the magnitudes of epsilon 1, 2 and epsilon 2, 3 are small, we can neglect the product and write the approximation that epsilon 1 th to 3 is equal to epsilon 1 to 2, and this is approximate, plus epsilon 2 to 3. So in, in that case, we can do what, what's called an additive decomposition. We can just add or superpose the, the strain states. One thing that we talked about in terms of deformation measures was the logarithmic strain, which was, which was really the true strain. So uh, if we consider that strain, let's see what happens. So if we consider the logarithmic strain, so recall then that the logarithmic strain was, uh, we could write that the logarithmic strain, let's say from 1 to 3, uh, would be equal to the natural log of... The, the stretch ratio from 1 to 3. Or similarly, we could then write that, that the stretch ratio from 1 to 3 is equal to E um, raised to the logarithmic, uh, the power of the log logarithmic strain. So substituting this equation now into our equation that we just uh, showed regarding the stretch ratios, we can write we can write, so remember it's lambda uh, from 1 to 3 is equal for, to lambda from 1 to 2 times lambda from 2 to 3. Making our substitution, we can write that e to the logarithmic strain from 1 to 3 then is equal to e uh, uh, times the logarithmic strain from 1 to 2 times e times the logarithmic strain from 2 to 3, right? Just by, by direct substitution. Okay? Um, if we continue on, uh, we could write that uh, we know that the, the product of two exponents with the same base, we can sum those exponents, so this becomes e to the epsilon, the log, uh, logarithmic strain from 1 to 2 plus the logarithmic strain from 2 to 3. And we can take the natural log of both sides and we can get that the, the logarithmic strain from 1 to 3 is now exactly the sum of the logarithmic strain from 1 to 2 plus the logarithmic strain from 2 to 3. The logarithmic strains are exactly additively combined. Okay, I want to caveat this by saying that um, this only works in 1D. Um, so just be aware of that because in 3D, uh, we end up with a product that, that requires us to take the natural log of, let's say two matrices, A times B. And in, in 3D, that's not the same as the natural log of A, uh, plus the natural log of B. Okay, 
So, so the this exact decomposition additively for the logarithmic strain only works in one in one D. Okay, so that seemed like a, a fun exercise. Well, why did we do all that? What was the whole point? Um, the reason is that even though I started out by just saying we have some deformed state, um, or yeah, some state one, two, and three, so we had three different states. Um, in, in reality, uh, we're going to now say those states have some meaning. We're going to separate uh, the elastic deformation and the plastic deformation. So we typically separate uh, deformations into elastic and plastic components. Uh, what that means is that we could write the, the stretch ratio for any deformation as the product of the elastic stretch times the plastic stretch. Lambda E is the, the stretch ratio uh, for elastic deformation. And lambda P is the stretch ratio for plastic deformation. So we, we follow the same logic that we had before. Uh, in terms of strain, we can write that the total strain epsilon will be equal to um, epsilon uh, elastic plus epsilon plastic plus the product of epsilon elastic times epsilon plastic. And then we can say that for small strains, and, and when I say that, I mean both elastic and plastic. So for small strains, we can approximate that equation as follows. Say that the total strain is equal to the elastic strain plus the plastic strain. Again, that's an approximation. Okay, so, so if we had other strains besides just elastic and plastic, remember plastic is an eigenstrain, elastic is the, the strain that's going to drive the stress, and we talked about that there's some potential other options. Maybe we have thermal strains, maybe we have strains due to damage. We could, we could write all of those uh, in a similar fashion as long as uh, they, they constitute small strains. Uh, we could write them as an additive de decomposition, just like this. And we write that the total strain it's approximately equal to the elastic strain plus the plastic strain. Now plus maybe strain due to damage, plus maybe strain due to uh, thermal expansion. We call that E theta. So that sort of uh, is, the, is the basics of how we're going to decompose strain, how we can decompose strain. Just be aware that when we do our additive decomposition, um, we're implicitly, even if, in case we don't say it, we're making the assumption of small strain. If we want to use um, large strain um, deformations, then we have to do this, this uh, a multiplicative decomposition like we, like we showed uh, before.